Brian, good morning. How's it going over on your end today, my friend? Good, Trav. How are things? Things are going quite well, going quite well. I uh, We were talking a little bit beforehand here, but kind of hit the ground running, um, but in a very positive way. Spent the morning kind of analyzing the charts, analyzing the on-chain data, and uh, it's as a quick teaser for anyone who's just logging in now to join us, uh, things lo are looking potentially a little bit pessimistic for the very near future. But the positive thing is that we have the tools at our fingertips to be able to potentially detect something like this from happening and position ourselves safely um, to be able to just, yeah, protect our liquidity, which is what it's all about. Um, so yeah, very quick high level review on where I'm at. How are you, Brian? What's happening on your end? Um, so we're definitely looking at some top signals right now uh, at Santiment, especially some of the social hype that came in at the end of last week and kind of marked uh, a potential top coming up. And uh, we were talking internally about how uh, it looks like there's so much hope and expectation of 70K BTC that we may come up just a tad short. And that's kind of what looks like has happened here. Um, it might only be one or two days before there's another run at 70K, but at least for now, it looks like this was a case where Euphoria got just a little bit too high too quickly. Uh, and so now it's up to the crowd to decide whether they want to pivot and get a little fearful, or if they, <laughs> you know, kind of have a firm denial of, of this top and believe it's just a matter of time. Obviously, we want to see the crowd get fearful. That's where markets tend to rise because the markets move the opposite direction of the crowd's expectation. So we're looking for that right now in the in the metrics. And we can go over a little, a little of it here on the call. I love it. Perfect. It's, um, it is pretty amazing to see these things play out consistently time and time again. And I'm having a hard time even remembering the last time the, the sentiment, the vibe on X uh, was just so... Uh, profoundly euphoric and i i do remember thinking back the the last couple of times that it was so strong and so positive that a lot of pain came up in in the very near future here so i'm looking forward to diving in uh, i'm excited to kind of share some of these metrics with everyone i'm excited to kind of learn some new ones uh, but before we do um, I was considering, let's just um, introduce ourselves. Let's introduce our agenda for today, and then let's dive in. How does that sound, Brian? Perfecto. You go first. I, I love it. Perfect. Well, welcome, everyone. My name is Trav. I am one of the hosts of the, the um, project Web3 Matters, and our goal is to um, deliver the most high-quality value, alpha, builders, highlight the best in, bed, in Web3 so that we can all win. And um, our mission today on this space is to uh, accomplish two quick things here. The first one is we want to see what's going on behind the curtains. We want to see what's happening on chain that um, could maybe predict what might happen next or what we can learn about what led into the moves that we're seeing now. And then the second part of our call is we've had an ongoing um, strategy uh, experiment, potentially, if you will, where we've been trying to use uh, the Sandbase dashboard to come up with some uh, some new, fun, intuitive uh, trading strategies. And we've set a couple of signals throughout the last couple of weeks here. So we're going to take a look to see how those ones are doing. And then we're going to potentially look to see to set some new ones this week and kind of, you know, really dial in a potential strategy um, for, for future trades. Um, so that's that's kind of where we're at right now. I'm going to pass the mic over to you, Brian. And uh, why don't you give us a bit of, of an introduction uh, for yourself and then for Santiment as well. Yeah, thanks, Trev. So I'm the head of content at Santiment. Santiment's an on-chain and social metric uh, corporation that really focuses on uh, as many blockchains as we can, as many assets as we can, uh, over 3,200 projects that we have data on at this time uh, with uh, our, our growing community just continuing to make it better and better by giving us feedback on what they need to do the best analysis possible and get the most transparency in the crypto space. So, um, you know, my job is to kind of blend all of what Santamin has to offer into a good summary on a daily basis to show some of the bullish and bearish divergences and everything in between. 
Uh, and uh, right now we've got a lot we can really say about it. So I'm excited to show uh, some of the most glaring metrics that are out there at the moment. And I got to say, that's certainly an understatement from my perspective. Seeing some of these signals on the on the charts on Sandbase, some are the most extreme I've ever seen them, to be honest with you. it's um, And I don't have a, a crazy amount of experience diving into these metrics here, but I was certainly shocked to open up Sandbase this morning and see one of them in particular that uh, I know we'll be diving into here pretty soon. So um, yeah, Brian, why don't we just dive right into it? I appreciate uh, the stellar introduction here. Uh, why don't we, if if it, it works for you, we can pull up your screen and you can walk us through some of these metrics that you're seeing right now. You bet. Let me know if it's showing up okay. It's perfect. It's perfect. So what do we have going on here? So we're starting here with the data screener. This is a uh, reflection of how the social volume and the price changes and the overall market cap and volume have been over the past week. Uh, we can see up here the social volume showing that Bitcoin and Ethereum are getting a very large increase in discussion. You can also see Solana here. They're all over 25% uh, increasing compared to the previous week in terms of discussion rates. That's a big deal because if you see here, we just put out this insight today. This green area is layer ones led by Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. And the social dominance is rising significantly for them. Um, we're looking at the top six assets for each of the layer one, layer two, meme coin, and AI and big data categories. So obviously the green part is being powered by BTC, ETH, and SOL, and they are just massively increasing as the price was increasing. That's common. Uh, for a lot of price runs in crypto and surges because generally the organic discussions about those top caps are what is reflective of a healthy uh, perspective about crypto. When we start seeing a lot of pink and purple here where the shift is going over the layer twos or meme coins or yellow, which is kind of covered by this box here, but you saw a lot of meme coin talk at the beginning of the month, right before prices just crash down. That's normal. That's a sign of greed. So we've kind of gotten rid of the greed, at least for now, uh, or at least over the past week, I should say. And it was replaced by layer ones. But once we got around here, as we scroll down, you can see that just right at the top when we hit around 68K over the weekend, that's when we had this huge spike in social uh, positivity toward Bitcoin in particular. Uh, it's great that we're talking about Bitcoin on an increased level. That's generally a good sign that there's cautious optimism from the crowd. However, the ratio of positive versus negative commentary across Telegram, 4chan, Bitcoin talk, Reddit, and uh, on X, it, it just skyrocketed to the point where it looked pretty inevitable, like we'd at least see a bit of a retrace. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, as we flash forward to two days later, if I pull up Bitcoin's chart here. Let's see. You can just go like this, duplicate the tab. We'll switch to my main on-chain template. And here we go. So, oh yeah, I'll even make it a little bit more granular. Look at just the past week. So we can get super nitty gritty about this. That is significant. So that was right where we saw that big positive spike. And then all of a sudden, boom, all these red candles show up. Yeah, we're seeing a tiny bit of a rebound. But like I said, a lot's going to depend on whether the crowd is kind of defiant now. And they're like, nope, Bitcoin's going to 70K. I don't care. Uh, nothing's going to stop me from buying and buying and buying. We don't want to see that. We want to see the crowd going crap, maybe I got a little bit too excited. Now markets are starting to retrace. I need to be cautious here. Um, and that would indicate that there's a, a healthy amount of bulls and bears kind of battling back and forth at the same time. If it's all bullish, if everyone's unanimously going Bitcoin to the moon, then the whales and sharks see that, 
they put up those sell wells and suddenly we can't hit that 70k level like everyone is expecting so that's that's kind of one of the key elements to what makes prices move up and down the social aspect is, is a huge piece of the pie uh, so I don't know if this is just a me thing or if this is a, a, a more generalized uh, phenomenon, but I'm looking at this and I'm geeking out so hard, <laughs> and it's, which is strange because and on the one hand, price is declining, which isn't necessarily uh, a cause to be you know happy, but um, seeing such a strong correlation between um, the sentiment that we can see graphically on this chart and the effect that it has on price is it's i don't know i'm geeking out huge <laughs> i kind of love to see it uh, and i think the reason why i am is because it really shows how powerful of a tool this is and like you're pulling up now looking historically back when we have had these massive spikes in sentiment we can see it very consistently how the price has reacted in a similar fashion to it to um as to how it currently is uh, i butchered that grammar my, my apologies here but uh it's um it's pretty wild it's pretty wild so what what um what are you, are you hoping to point out i noticed you've kind of zoomed out a little bit in terms of sentiment um what um what can you tell us about this chart here yeah generally the positive sentiment when it spikes like this look at it relative to recent times because there were simply a lot more discussions good and bad going on back in march so you don't want to compare this positive spike to what was happening in March. You just want to compare it to like the previous couple of weeks or what's been going on the last month. So you see fairly negative going on. Here, I'll just hide this to make it easier. Just look at the yellow for a minute. Fairly negative for a lot of this stretch as price was going down. Everyone was getting more and more uh, concerned. And then look, right when we were bottoming out here, we get the lowest sentiment of the year. People are just ready to jump off the bridge and say, I'm out of Bitcoin. I don't believe in crypto anymore. And then suddenly we go from 57K up to 69, right? And then eventually it corrects after we get the most positive sentiment we've seen since uh, May 22nd. That's not a coincidence. This happens all the time in crypto where you start to see the crowd leaning one way or another uh, and the opposite result ends up happening to catch everyone off guard so i don't think this was any exception we saw it over the weekend we posted about it and uh those of you who reacted to it congratulations um if you didn't not a big deal there will be plenty more opportunities where the crowd gets overly euphoric or overly fearful and you you can get another crack at it but for now it looks like there might be a bit of ranging going on at least according to the social uh element which is now a little bit all over the place after this mild correction so i have two thoughts that have kind of occurred to me here as i'm listening to you describe um these these incredible metrics uh the first one is it's it's interesting to consider how the recent bitcoin conference that uh trump himself participated in um and it, in relation to kind of price action and sentiment at large i mean just looking at it from this the perspective of you know, having presidential candidates speak so openly bullish about Bitcoin and crypto in general is pretty remarkable. Uh, but it almost looks like it had a buy the rumor, sell the news sort of um, effect on price. Whereas having such a um, generalized hype amongst Web3 um, enthusiasts, but then also, you know, the Web2 political circles is massive but what goes up must come down my other question for you i would like to kind of get your response to this one but um, i'd also like to ask uh, maybe while you are kind of giving us your insight on on how the crypto conference may have played into this is um how you guys go about uh kind of gaining these these metrics what exactly are you measuring how are you um how are you getting this this data and like what are you measuring so pulling up the social dashboard here what we're doing is we're measuring the frequency of discussions related to any keywords in this case since you mentioned the political uh element to it we're looking at trump in blue in fact that's backwards we need harris in blue since they're the uh they're the democratic side got to make it 
Although she is there. being pressured to adopt a more pro crypto stance here. So we'll see. Right. We'll see. Maybe that will be uh, some telling some telling data in the future. So keep in mind, these are these are uh, on their own axes. So if I put them on the shared axes, you can still see that there's way more Trump discussion than there is Harris. But just comparing each of them to their highs and lows over the past week, we can see this was when we had that big Trump spike over the weekend. Um, why am I forgetting what happened? This was, this was on Saturday. Um, and I think he just had a, a public speaking session. I know there are people watching this stream, screaming at, at the screen and telling us what it was, but I can't remember either way. <laughs> There was a big event that caused uh, crypto to temporarily drop and then rise. And I think he specifically mentioned crypto right here, mm -hmm. which is why everyone suddenly went nuts and we're talking about it in crypto forums. Uh, then it, it kind of goes back down. And then we just got a bunch of Harris discussion. Uh, I have not found out what this is related to yet. Uh, maybe even on your screen, if you Google really quick, um, there might be something that pops up. Uh, Trav, I'm very curious, but this just happened in the last three hours or so where we got this big Harris spike. Okay. It isn't necessarily related to crypto, but I wouldn't be shocked since this social volume is uh, suddenly seeing a, a big upswing. Okay, so far, uh, I haven't, I'm not sure that I found it specifically, but I did see that Democratic members of Congress wrote in a letter to uh, Kamala Harris uh, to kind of lighten her stance and to adopt a more pro crypto stance here. Mm -hmm. um, but I will keep looking if you want to continue to. No, no, tell no big deal. I, I was just curious if something was just glaring on, mm -hmm. on the top uh, hit for Google. But yeah, that makes sense. It's it's probably some speculation about her stance on crypto. that's really circulating on forums right now. You can see, especially on Reddit, uh, that's the case. So Reddit and X are leading the charge in discussions about Harris right now. Uh, based on history so far, uh, at least throughout 2024, any positive news about Trump has led to at least a temporary uptick in crypto prices uh, because the consensus among traders, uh, their perception is that Trump would have a more pro crypto stance when all is said and done. Makes sense why they have that perception since he's been more public, whereas Harris literally just got uh, thrown into the mix less than a week ago and uh, she hasn't made many comments about it yet. That could change. Um, Santman doesn't take a political stance. We just observe how the crowd perceives things and what price patterns result from their perceptions. So as of now, um, you can use a chart like this if you just go to the social trends page and you put in you know, Trump and Harris, you can compare when each of them are getting their time in the sun and how prices are reacting to that. No, that makes a ton of sense. Um, I, um, I think that is a tremendously powerful tool. And one of the main reasons why I was drawn towards Santiment and Sandbase to begin with here, um, just being able to access, you know, the, 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 all of the data that is available when it comes to uh, the blockchain, but then also tap into kind of the X and Reddit and all of these different APIs to be able to monitor trends is absolutely incredible here. Um, so I've just seen here. Oh wait, this is this is not up to date here. Um, okay. I, I thought I had some more update, updated information on Kamala Harris for you. I do not yet. Uh, what I do know is apparently some of the main talking points that Trump had during the Bitcoin conference are he wants to see Gary Gensler fired. He wants to create a reserve fund for crypto in the U.S. government. And then there was one other one as well. Oh, he, he encourages everyone to hold their Bitcoin forever. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Very interesting. Indeed. Yeah, and I, I saw Musk talking about Trump again today. He's mm. been very frequently endorsing him on Indeed. X. Uh, so I'm not shocked if I go down to Twitter here uh, to see some occasional Musk mentions scattered in there. But I'm actually seeing more. Oh, wait, never mind. It's, it's scattering around the colors, but Musk is here in blue. So most of it is happening on Twitter slash X, which is not a surprise. But don't be surprised if if Musk mention frequency is kind of a, a 
an extension of Trump endorsements based on at least the past couple of weeks of patterns when he's gotten a lot more vocal about it. But regardless, you know, we have so much we can look at besides just the political end. I, I do want to get into uh, the correlation with the S&P really quick. And you can see how there was this big break here, Trav, where Bitcoin really started to surge and the S&P was kind of flat. And this was a bit of a surprise to some people since the two sectors have been so closely ingrained for the last couple of years. And I do expect that they're going to they're going to kind of relatively snap into each other once again soon. But right now they're kind of going to the beat of their own drums, which uh, is historically a good sign for crypto when they're not relying on equities whatsoever. Absolutely. I um, I think that's a strong testament to the power of, of crypto when you can have such a influential force like the U.S. economy go in one direction and you see Bitcoin diverge in the opposite direction um, in this specific situation, a bullish one. That makes me happy. That makes me very happy. And I yeah. also appreciate you kind of pivoting our, our topic from a political stance and getting back into kind of the on-chain data um, to see kind of what's happening and what we might be able to expect here moving forward. So here I see that the supply on exchange and I did note, I believe we spoke last time or maybe this was during a chat or something, but we did see a small spike in supply on exchange here. So what uh, what's happening here on this chart and what um, what are the implications? So this is one of my favorite charts to check in on on a daily basis. What we're looking at is the amount of Bitcoin held by wallets with at least 10 BTC in them. Uh, they've been on a pretty consistent rise, but since the 21st, just about a week ago, uh, since we exactly a week ago, actually, since we only have this update once per day. So our last was on the close of the 28th. We've seen the amount of BTC held by these 10 plus wallets decrease by 3721 BTC. Not a huge deal, but if we zoom way back to the last year, you can see that the times in which Bitcoin's uh, 10 plus wallets are actually dumping is pretty rare. Most of the time they're they're accumulating, accumulating pretty aggressively. And you can see over the last year, they've added a total of about 236K BTC. So we want to see them constantly growing and any break they may have like here where they're going down just a little bit that tends to be where markets top out. Uh, it's not the only reason markets top out and there are plenty of exceptions, but when you start to see them flatten out or actually go down a bit, that's a bit of a warning sign, even if it's very little. But uh, for the most part, as long as they're continuing to rise, you don't have uh, as many significant things to worry about in terms of a, an upcoming dump. But right now it's a little shaky. So that's another thing on top of that euphoric spike from the crowd that we saw this weekend that was signaling that we might be seeing a bit of a retrace. Now, it isn't a big one by any means. I mean, it's still at 67K uh, after being at 69. Uh, we've seen way huger swings in way shorter amounts of time. But just keep in mind, we, we'd like to see this start to turn around just even just the next couple of days uh, here in the opening start of the the final day i guess the final days of july opening week opening days of the week here we'd like to see maybe just a tad of an upswing once again to look a little more like this uh kind of like they started to accumulate after this tiny dump here on july 10th and 11th uh so look for that and in case it stays flat or moves down uh there might be a little more choppiness and concerning price swings that will test your patience uh, and and that's kind of the two scenarios i see play out right now it's going to be about the whales and whether they accumulate and the crowd and whether they get fearful that makes a ton of sense and just from kind of eyeballing it comparing the most recent let's say four or five kind of slight downturns in price uh, and again this is just from eyeballing it i haven't actually taken any measurements or, or or anything along those lines here to corroborate this but it almost looks like the uh downturns have been getting less and less significant as time goes by um again just my eyeballs untrained non-professional eyeballs sure. here um but i would be curious to see kind of how this plays out 
And what is also interesting that I'm noticing is when this down, this current downturn just started, it was um, at the kind of the, the prior peak to the one that we are kind of sitting on, or the most recent one rather, and price was able to recover a fair amount. Um, just noticing observations here, not predicting anything, but um, again, I will be curious to kind of notice these trends, um, uh, see how they play out. And then in future scenarios that are kind of similar, kind of uh, re-implement those theses and see how things go from there. I think that's one of the main things that uh, this type of analysis is, is all about. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on, on that there, Brian? Yeah, I, there's a lot of mini stories that can arise from the, the 10 plus BTC whales and how they're behaving at any given time. Um, it's really like the sustained dumps like this, you know, that we saw from August all the way up until late September that really kind of suppress markets and, and have prices weigh in the doldrums like they were back then. But you can even see once they started to accumulate in uh, late September, the price took off pretty quickly. So it's, I think it's one of the best correlations out there. There are plenty of other opinions though. Um, and I know many people are asking about the altcoin situation now too. So I wanted to bring up this chart and show that most altcoins out there on the midterm time frame are still on the underbought side, which is a great sign. Obviously, Bitcoin throughout 2024 has had pretty severe price dominance over most assets, especially when things retrace. Bitcoin has a, a tendency to stay afloat pretty well, while altcoins have just been destroyed for large chunks of the year. Uh, yes, most altcoins are still up because we had an epic bull rally uh, from October through March. Uh, but after that, uh, you know, a lot of assets out there took took a bit of a beating. And I think that's why this model is still showing that according to average trading returns, most are underwater, uh, meaning you would be buying or adding on to your positions at decreased risk on like a 30 to 180 day time frame if you're targeting those kinds of uh intervals to hold your crypto so that's a good sign especially a few that have really been wrecked like chromia uh high street polka starter perpetual protocol i know these aren't common names but uh they're standing out because of the lack of gains that have come from uh investors of those particular projects for a long period of time Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. It's, it's starting to become a bit more clear now uh, what we're looking at. And that was what I was going to ask you. Maybe if you can um, simplify a little bit what exactly we're seeing on this chart. Um, mm -hmm. You you very eloquently um, mentioned that um, the, the, these are kind of the least performing assets in relation to kind of the market at large here. Um, yep. So for example, on top, we're looking at some of the um, higher likelihood or the, some of the assets that have the higher likelihood of kind of now seeing those gains in price, the more oversold uh, assets. Whereas on the bottom, we have ones that are kind of outperforming the market, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's right. So the, the market value versus real realized value is what MVRV stands for. And uh, we're looking not just at how they're performing versus each other, but specifically how average traders are doing through all of their FOMO and FUD and buying low, selling high or vice versa. How, how are the average trading returns of each of the wallets that have been active over a certain period of time? So if I looked at, for example, uh, the MVRV for Bitcoin on Sandbase, you can see the 30 day average trading returns are at about plus 5.3 percent so anything below zero that's indicative of a good historic buy time anything above zero is a historic sell time like we saw back near the all-time highs so this would have been a great time to start taking profit because average trading returns were way up at like plus 17 percent for any wallet that was active in the past 30 days it was even more extreme on the long term end so wallets that had been active in the past 365 days they got all the way up to an average of about plus 72 percent you don't want to be in in an investment at least all in while the 
average returns are way, way, almost like 2x compared to uh, break even, right? Because these MVRVs, no matter what the time frame is, they're going to hover around zero or break even. So when they're way up high, that means it's in an extreme danger zone. When they're way down low, that's an extreme opportunity zone uh, because these are designed to stay around 0% to reflect crypto's zero sum game, just like any other sector. So this model is basically showing the undervaluation or overvaluation based on a combination of different midterm time intervals, if that makes sense. It makes a ton of sense. Uh, so, you're, sorry, um, just to kind of elaborate or ask for clarification here, this is this is based on multiple time frames. You said so it would be 30, 90, and one eighty. Thirty, ninety, and one eighty combined. Gotcha. Yep. Got you. Perfect. And is it does it work in a similar fashion as um, as like looking at a, a price chart where the higher the time frame, um, the longer the MVRV holding period, the more influential yep. the the extremes. Yeah, like if you look at one day returns, if if the one day returns are over two or three percent, that's that's pretty over average for a given day. But if you look at 90 days, uh, an extreme would be like plus 25 percent uh, to give you some perspective. So, yeah, the longer you go, the the higher the stringent uh, highs and lows would be for what's considered to be super extreme underbought or super extreme overbought levels. Gotcha. Perfect. So then just to kind of bring it all together, looking at this specific chart here, uh, this would be um, uh, helpful and useful to kind of get an idea on where price may go over the next several weeks, months. Does that sound about accurate? Or is it a shorter or longer time frame than that? Anywhere between 30 to 180 uh, gotcha. days, it really is what you want to focus on. So uh, as long as you aren't planning on buying today and selling tomorrow, you know, and you have a bit more of a long-term horizon, then this is telling you where the risk lies. Getting into these assets, assuming that they're viable and aren't just rug pulls, I'm not going to uh, give any personal opinions about any of them, but most of these should be considered trusted, especially on the ERC-20 blockchain. But there's, there's, you know, we don't know these teams fully well, and that's what development activity is for and things like that. But assuming all is even right and these projects all have the uh, a decent chance of pumping or dumping at any given time you want to be in the ones that are less risky and have already seen severe trader pain you want to buy into others pain and sell while everyone is celebrating that's generally what the pro traders out there are doing to make money Perfect. So just to, that was a, a very powerful piece of alpha that I just want to emphasize for anyone watching us right now. And of course, we have almost 900 people hanging out with us at the moment. So I just want to thank you guys for taking the time to hang out with us here today. That was uh, uh, just to reiterate what Brian just said here. Um, one of the stronger trading principles, investing principles when it comes to buying or selling an asset is to sell into other people's greed buy into other people's pain. And I think this chart here represents that wonderfully. So what uh, what do you have next for us, Brian? What uh, any, any other metrics that you'd like us to take a look at today that uh, were pretty startling? Yeah, we'll conclude with a quick look at the activity matrix. This is basically a recap of over 100 different projects and which assets out there are seeing a hot amount of network activity or a cold amount of network activity compared to their own resting averages. So when you look at the labels of these, you can see the names like 0x, 1inch, Ajo, Ave, and they're all alphabetical going from left to right, and then you got the next line, next line, etc. But when you look at the labels, you'll notice they're all in different colors. And I didn't make these colors manually. They're automatically programmed to be super red when the network is starting to see like a huge amount of network growth, or social dominance, or exchange uh, outflow, things like that. And then they tend to get very blue, representing a cold network when you see uh, extra low network activity or very low whale transactions. Basically, all of these 
categories together, which are, I know, in very small font, but they all have their purpose and they're designed to show where the current day is versus the 90 day average of that assets, um, you know, normal expectation for that category. So for example, we see compound right here, sticking out here in bright red, and I'm not seeing any others on here in that same color. So compound is red because it's seeing a huge breakout in active addresses, in network growth, whale transactions are even up, uh, social dominance is high, exchange outflow is high, that's why it's in red. If it was inflow, it would be in blue, that would be bad. Uh, mean dollar invested age, meaning a lot of dormant tokens are being moved, and age consumed is similar to that, where it's showing the amount of coins being moved multiplied by how much those coins were worth. So compound is one that should be showing up on this leaderboard tab, if I just search compound, for example, look at all these hits for compound. Fifth largest day in the past 90 days for active addresses. Second largest for network growth. 13th largest for whale transactions. Uh, seventh for social dominance. Exchange flow is up there. And then it's having one of its highest, second highest dormant activity day in the past 90 days. So not surprisingly, it's the hottest network that doesn't necessarily mean most bullish but it is the hottest according to its sudden activity compared to its normal average uh and that is fascinating to me so i could actually go to sandbase again look up compound and we're going to see a bunch of spikes there you go just like the activity matrix shows huge spikes in circulation uh mvrv is relatively low that's good tons of shorting going on which is also good i think there was some negative news mm -hmm. about compound that went kind of viral uh I, I won't look it up right now but you guys can search for it yourself and it might be related to why it's getting so much activity uh i think it had to do so, someone said something about how like compounds price has been performing really poorly and they don't even care um and that kind of went viral you can see whale transactions went up a lot in the last couple days so there's there's just a lot of activity related to it and i don't want to put too much of a target either way on compound because this doesn't necessarily mean the price is going to rise generally if you're looking for price alpha when you see a network getting hot it increases the probability of the price switching directions so in this case Compound has been on kind of a two month downturn here, which would indicate that all of this hot network activity increases the likelihood of a rise historically. But there's so much context and reason behind why it's been dropping. I just I, I recommend that everyone kind of does their own uh, assessment of the project, which has been getting some negative press as of late and then do with that, this information what you will. But overall, Compound is apparently the hottest. And if you look at the coldest, you can see a few standouts here like Tether, Pepe, and even Ethereum, uh, which are getting very little activity compared to what they have been seeing. Let's take a look at uh, Pepe, which has obviously been one of the better performing meme coins throughout uh, 2024, especially after this run in late February until... I guess all the way until late May, they went up. If I just take a random day there and go here, yeah, plus thirteen hundred percent market value. I'd say that's a pretty good performance over a three-month stretch. So that's a little significant. Yep, yeah, I would say. <laughs> yeah. So just like the activity matrix says, the act, uh, the network activity is pretty low right now. Very little daily active addresses compared to usual you can see this orange trend line showing the just the smooth 30-day average um whale transactions super low so you get the idea and when you see cold activity it doesn't necessarily mean prices are going to go down it just means that there's very little likelihood that we're suddenly going to see this big turnaround or breakout for it um, if anything a cold network indicates that whatever direction it's been going 
it's more likely to just continue going that direction until something in the on-chain uh, uh, metrics starts to change. So that's that's kind of the way people at Santiment use that particular uh, aspect of our of our data source. Incredible. There's there's so much to respond here. First of all, this this chart here, this matrix. Uh, is phenomenal. And as a visual person myself, to be able to see um, all of these assets, all of these metrics so clear in front of me was a huge advantage um, for myself, you know, in, to navigate the crypto world. Um, another quick note here, uh, it does sound like there is some pretty negative news about Compound. I won't go into it today, but uh, some it, um, it, something did happen that caused a pretty significant outcry uh that had a very bearish bias so i'd definitely mm -hmm. be very curious to kind of see how this affects the price moving forward uh, i do know that compound typically is a pretty um trustworthy and tried tested and true asset um, on the ethereum chain uh, so i would hope that this is doesn't do irreparable damage uh, but i'd be very curious to see you know especially being so low in price already on the chart if this is going to catalyze, you know, um, a rebound or just further decline in price moving forward. The last thought that I had is it's almost like this is a measure of volatility in many ways. Uh, seeing these cold dormant assets, you know, uh, volatility kind of constricts price has tiny swings. It could almost be a, a useful tool in identifying the coldest ones in anticipation of potential massive increase in volatility um, over the next select time period. Um, any, any, is there any merit to that thought, Brian? Does that make sense or is- um, You're saying that crazy? when a network gets cold, it's going to increase the volatility? I mean, it's, the way I think about it is kind of like price, what goes up might, might come down. And when we're looking at um, price volatility, often you have the biggest spikes in volatility um, immediately preceding periods where volatility was at its smallest. Um, am I just talking out of my butt or does that kind of make sense what I'm saying? I, it would be a new perspective for me, but I, I'm not going to shoot it down. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I can only go off of what I've seen uh, in price performances following these anomalies. And generally you see uh, turnarounds it's not so much a volatility indicator, but a turnaround indicator when you see networks get hot. So a lot of people think hot means good, uh, and that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes it's a network gets hot because it had just gone on a 30% run over a couple of days, and then everyone is creating new addresses and trying to get in the latest meme coin. Uh, but when you see all of that FOMO, it actually generates a top. So on the other end, kind of like what we're seeing with Compound right now, assuming whatever news is going on here starts to get straightened out, all the people that are fudding Compound and perhaps, uh, you know, whales are being active because even they're selling or, uh, you know, social dominance is obviously up because people are talking negatively about it right now and dormant coins are being moved. If that settles down, uh, there could be an opportunity to actually be a contrarian and buy into compound. Uh, and that's kind of the way the activity matrix from what I have seen has been most effective. That makes a ton of sense. So don't use this to blindly enter trades. Always do your due diligence and um, look a bit further into the context surrounding uh, these signals. And um, yeah, uh, nothing wrong with informing yourself to the best of your abilities. That's perfect. Well said, Trev. Absolutely. But yeah, that's about all I've got for today. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for everybody. And, and let us know in the comments under Trav's live stream post what you guys think about everything we've talked about and what you'd like to see us talk about for next time. 100%. Yeah, we are actively scanning our comments here. So if anyone has any questions or suggestions of things you'd like to better understand or assets you want to dive into, feel free to give us a comment and we'll uh, we'll take note of that for, for future future calls here. Before we wrap up, because we've been chatting now for 45 minutes, which I can't believe it seems like maybe three. Um, why don't we take a look at the positions that we created uh, two, two calls ago and we can see where they're at. Do you have the time for that, Brian? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, I'd say keep it to about five minutes because I do have another call coming up. But uh, yeah, I'd love to see how your chain link position is 
performing right now. Perfect, perfect. Let's pull this up now here. Oh goodness. This might actually be a bit more complicated and we may have to bump this. Uh, okay, hold up. I'll give it one more shot. And if we can do it, wonderful. If not, we will save it for our next call here. Here we go. Perfect. Okay. So not the greatest, <laughs> not the greatest indeed. So for anyone who may have missed these calls, uh, basically what we did is we took a look at a couple of different metrics. Hold on a second. Uh, I wasn't going to be able to open that up and that's probably, ah, uh, there we go. Are you able to see that? Yep. Oh, I think that's the issue. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, we looked at a couple of different indicators to, to kind of develop our trading thesis for link. Uh, the things that we looked at, I don't know why this keeps on dropping here, but, uh, our, um, the weighted sentiment was quite low. The, uh, yearly MVRV was, uh, neutral and very close to, to zero, um, which in, in, in the case of a, a bias for direction is typically, um, well, it's not bearish. I'll, I'll, I'll say that here. And then the last one was uh, there, there seemed to be some significant whale accumulation as well. So we opened this position on July 16th and there was a little bit of a run here, but price has uh, continued to kind of trade sideways for a little while. So I'm curious to know your thoughts on this, Brian, but my thoughts are that uh, I think timing may just not have been, we may, may not have chosen the right time horizon. I believe we still have, um, you know, a day to to kind of hold this position to see whether you know it, in the end price can can jump but um any any thoughts from your end that uh we should kind of take away from this experience or um you know kind of what happened with our, our trading thesis yeah i think uh chain link is kind of just trading mid-range with the most altcoins right now it hasn't really stood out good or bad in any way since the past week and this past week has been heavily kind of a Bitcoin party a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit on the Ethereum and Solana side during parts of the week as well. But most altcoins, especially outside of the top 10, have uh, struggled a bit. And I think it was more of a timing thing than anything else, especially since you, you know, showing that entry point that you had, you you definitely bought, you know, obviously when, the, when we were recording the call, markets were on the rise quite a bit. Uh, and ideally, we'd actually be be opening longs when markets are uh, seeing a bit of a drop, at least over the last few days. So we did so in maybe kind of a greedy spot where the, uh, as you can see, I mean, it, it declined almost right away. And yeah, it rebounded and we ended up getting a little bit ahead uh, in the positive range. But then this retrace over the weekend, I think really wrecked a lot of hopes of uh you winning the big grand prize for this this latest epoch and we're just gonna have to try again for the next one which is ending in just a couple of days perfect and hey i look forward to that yeah. yes okay perfect well hey for our next call let's uh let's 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 get in it to win it uh i'm, I'm excited to dive into that one thing i will mention yeah. is that um, and as a takeaway to anybody watching right now, uh, we actually did talk about that specific point of, you know, not preferring to buy in after a dip as opposed to buying in right at the peak of a run. And we did actually um, point out this level here, which I believe I don't have my chart open right now is about the $13, uh, $12, 75 cent range. And if we did wait and enter at that level, we would have been in a pretty nice spot right now. Um, so I think that's a good takeaway is like we mentioned earlier, uh, it's always um, better to buy in to others pain and sell into others euphoria. And uh, we certainly did not do that on this time, but we're learning and we're stronger for it. Yeah, like I said, it's more timing than anything. I still think the decision to open along for Link was a, a solid one and had, had foundation and good reason. Um, it, it's just a matter of like, you know, we're in a two week competition. Was it the ideal time? Were there better coins that maybe were having a dip during the time when we were looking for coins rather than being on the rise like, like Link was. So if we were to see this competition go on for six months, it could be a much different story. But since this happens to be a two week contest, there were probably better projects to pick for that particular time. 
Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. And as a bit of a teaser for our next call, we, um, uh, Brian and I, we're going to definitely be looking into um, uh, future positions with shorter timeframes and how we can use Sandbase to um, to come up with those trading theses. And um, that's something I'm very much looking forward to doing because typically when I use Sandbase, it's for uh, much longer term holds. Uh, but to be able to use that for you know, shorter swing trades ranging up to two weeks in this scenario uh, is something that I'm pretty excited about. So any final thoughts or words or, or things you'd like to share with us today, Brian? That's it for today, man. I enjoyed the talk and uh, I think we can revisit soon and see how markets have ended up uh, as we open August here. Uh, right now, I think the euphoria needs to die down just a little bit more and then we could see a legit run at 70K and beyond by the time we talk next. Excellent. I can't, uh, couldn't agree more. And I'm very excited to have had this call with you. Thank you so much, Brian, for, for giving us your time today. Uh, good luck on your future call. And thanks to everyone for joining us today uh, for this incredible live stream. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for our next one. Likely will be next Monday, but uh, we'll confirm later. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Trap. Take care.